Hello and welcome to the Microbiology Society Sustainable Future Series of Workshops. My name is Paul O'Toole and I'm a professor of microbiology in University College Cork and I'm joined today by Max Powley. Max, tell me a bit about yourself and why you're interested in sustainability. Yeah, my name is Max Powley. I work as program coordinator for the World Academy of Sciences, a UNESCO program unit. My interest in sustainability is goes long way back. Um, over 20 years ago, I started uh, talking to students at university and then uh, during uh, my teaching experiences about the environment, about environmental issues. I remember setting up a sustainability group. But then 15 years ago, I became a father and that added a whole new dimension to my uh, passion, to my dedication for sustainability. Being a father of two daughters meant thinking about their future, them in the future, as well as the future of all the new generations. So basically now I believe that sustainability is the most relevant, crucial, hot topic, the most important conversation that we should have. You and I have written together about the Sustainable Development Goals. Could you tell our viewers what those actually are? Yeah, the uh, Sustainable Development Goals they are also known as SDGs. They follow on from the MDGs, the Millennium Development Goals. The mandate of the MDGs ended in 2015, which is when the SDGs were published by the United Nations as part of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The SDGs include 17 goals, which are probably the best attempt so far at an international level to address sustainability issues worldwide. It is important to look beyond the colorful icons of the SDGs, because behind each one of those SDGs are specific targets. In total, we have 169 targets. However, many people feel that the SDGs are still a little bit anthropocentric, so too much based on a human perspective. To balance this, I just want to mention a planet's perspective in terms of the publications by the World Scientist Warnings to Humanity. There were two publications. I will briefly summarize their warnings. First, human population growth is causing environmental damage, which has led to biodiversity loss, and also with increasing greenhouse gas emissions to climate changes. So these global challenges are addressed by the SDGs together with key targets for human well-being. Yeah, so Paul, um, how, how did it happen that you became interested in, in this, these issues of sustainability? It's been a long road. I didn't start working on sustainability. I started working on microbial pathogenicity, trying to kill microbial pathogens. And about 20 years ago, I started to work on gut commensals and the human gut microbiome. But as I became more involved in food microbiome interactions, I started to work on the gut microbiome of other animals. I even have a program on the gut microbiome of honeybees. And it became apparent that the composition of the microbiome was governed by habitual diet, which in turn led me to studying food. And we began to study production of different kinds of foods, uh, and that led me into, for example, a current EU project where we're looking at the effect of minimally processed, sustainably produced foods on the human gut microbiome and its effect on health. I've always been conscious that I've been surrounded in my department and in the Microbiology Society by environmental microbiologists. And I always thought that sustainability belonged to them because there are obvious uh, research topics like um, bioremediation, biogeochemical cycles. But in recent years, I've realized that many, if not all branches of microbiology are relevant for studying sustainability and for promoting the implementation of the SDGs. So Max, tell me about your practical involvement in the SDGs. Well, through uh, my job with the World Academy of Sciences, a UNESCO program unit, uh, over the last um, four or five years or so, I've been dealing a lot with scientists in developing countries. 
in particular, I've also given presentations and led workshops uh, on, on the SDGs themselves. What we noticed initially was that many scientists had limited knowledge of the SDGs, or no knowledge at all, actually. Um, in developing countries, we noticed that perhaps um, there is a slightly different focus. Uh, the emphasis is really on development, growth, Something that strikes me of, of scientists, but not just the ones in developing countries, perhaps scientists in general, is that many are extremely focused on their narrow field of specialization of, of investigation. And, and so perhaps they, they lose perspective of the big picture. I can give you a good example of how it's possible to encourage scientists who are naturally deeply focused on their own research problem to include the STG in their thinking and the planning of their research. I'm a member of the APC Microbiome Ireland Institute, which has about 150 scientists working largely on the gut microbiome. And recently I had the opportunity to lead the mapping of all of our research activity onto the SDGs in a research open day. And it was quite easy and it was logical and productive to show my colleagues how I'd say the vast majority of the things we do have some connection with the SDGs, as you can see in this slide. This is because many of the extraneous factors which impact on the human microbiome are linked to environmental concerns which can be tackled through pursuing research uh, with the SDGs in mind. Yeah, Paul, your experience is enlightening and very inspiring. It, it, it does show that the exercise of explaining the SDGs and how scientists' research can relate to them is indeed possible, very worthwhile. I think this should be done in general. Not only should be done with many or all scientists, but it should be done across the board. I'm talking about education. Given the current status of the planet, and of human societies in relation to the planetary boundaries, I believe the need for education on sustainability has never been greater. To be honest, I'm not the first one to say so. Back in 1987, in the report called Our Common Future, published by the Brundtland Commission, it was clearly explicitly said that teachers will have an important and hard job to convey messages on the global challenges and on sustainability principles. Then later, actually, um, the UN launched a really interesting initiative. It was called the Decade of Education for Sustainable Development, which was actually led by UNESCO. So really, we're not the first ones to talk about education, but I do believe that um, the prospect of education should be fully embraced. It's really time that people do that. People should organize courses and workshops. Paul, how do you feel about including sustainability, a sustainability module in all degree courses, as well as across schools? What do you think about this um, radical idea? I think that's a great idea, Max. It's something that we're working on right now. I can see that happening in two different ways. In the first case, for science students who already have the grasps of biology, physics, and chemistry, you can teach them quite a discipline-specific module, um, showing them the role of various processes on global sustainability. But I think it's equally important to have an open access module for all university students with low barriers to entry, essentially zero prerequisites. But this is going to be a science-based module where you're teaching non-scientists the rudimentary principles which are at play in sustainability. And most important of all, what needs to be done on an individual and societal basis to make sustainability achievable within our lifetimes. Because as you pointed out already, time is getting really short. Do you see benefits for people other than uh, students involved in education, Max, for sustainability teaching? Absolutely, yes. I think sustainability or a sustainability module course education should be and must be for everyone. For example, whether someone is taking a politics degree or a history degree or a medical degree or an engineering degree, any of these people should really study a little module 
on sustainability. Because the potential is that for each one of these people at some point in their lives, in a small scale or in a big scale, they may really be in a position of making decisions. Being a decision maker means that they must have an understanding of sustainability. They must think in the context of global challenges. And really, this is so important to bridge a gap that is currently crucifying our path towards sustainability. And that gap is called the science policy gap. Paul, do you feel that there is a chance to redirect the path of societies given the current pandemic? I certainly hope so. Clearly, the dominant theme at the moment is the COVID-19 pandemic. But as we try to rebuild our economies in the wake of this global catastrophe, we have to engineer some sort of sustainability model into the economic recovery. And we've seen this articulated in recent editorials in, for example, publications like Nature, whereby knowledge of microbiological principles can be engineered into economic recovery. If we ignore sustainability and continue with business as usual, the likelihood is that we'll make the planetary system even more fragile, which could contribute to the development of future pandemics. So although it's a very difficult time in human civilization, perhaps it is an opportunity we should grasp in engineering sustainable principles into future economic development. So in conclusion, good luck implementing your own sustainability initiatives. You will find a list of resources at the end of this video, which you will hopefully use for your own education or for your own initiatives on education for sustainability. So I hope you enjoy the Sustainable Future Workshop.